Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV's Midweek Musings on a Monday for a change. Um, this is the interactive show where we pick you three questions during the week and give you a chance to answer them after answering them ourselves. And this week was a good one. And actually, um, not too long ago, before just, just before I filmed this, I said that I was going to put out a fourth question. And uh, it's something that's just come to light. Um, I've known for a while, but I just want to know what you guys think. Um, so let's get straight into this. So question number one. Bilic has admitted we could sign some more players if needed. If you, if it's up to you, what positions still need reinforcing? Um, to me, I think our defence has looked very shaky this year. Um, Font doesn't look like he's up to scratch at the minute. Um, I know he had a long Euros. Uh, sorry, not Euros. He went on to play a different competition. I can't remember where it was now. Confederations Cup, was it? Um, and he had a little bit of a layoff. So it might be a fitness thing. But do uh, you know what? Ginger Pele might be coming to the end of his career. Reed's not fit enough. Obonas looks shaky uh, since he's come back from an injury. Fonty's looks shaky. I'd get another centre back. Um, I'd also I, I wouldn't have signed a centre midfielder, but I wouldn't have sent Josh Cullen out on loan. I would have had him as a, a backup for our main um, central midfielders. And we definitely need another striker. I don't care what anybody says. Chicharito, the sign of Chicharito was a was a, a piece of genius, especially in a few friendly games I've seen because he looks like he's uh, you know he's attacking a ball like no one I've seen since Jermaine Defoe probably in a West Ham shirt but if something happens to him he gets injured can you still rely on Carroll and Sacco I'd say no definitely not but um, that's the ones I would reinforce anyway a new striker new centre back uh, new centre midfielder I, I reckon um, I know we're in the market for a few but let's see what you guys said um, at PBM 1968, still need another striker who can be a game changer off the bench. Creative midfielder too is a proper backup for Lanzini. There's obviously some uh, names being banded around. Jack Wilshire is one. Um, would we like to see him come to club? I'm not sure. Um, at Jack in Dia 1271 says a striker and a player on the right who can play as both winger and in midfield. At Josh Wilkie 93, still need another striker. Hernandez gets injured. We're back to square one. At Mookie B84 says another striker 100%. Uh, at Slav says uh, at least a striker. Please announce Gray. Uh, it'd be a good back, but would he want to come as backup? I'm not sure. Um, at Creek Mass says I'd like to see Wilshire come in. At D Gardner W8 chooses a backup for Lanzini and another striker. Um, at James Hawkins 24 says no relation. If I'd get Wilshire, world class when fit and wants to play for us. I'd get someone that wants to play for us rather than someone who was used us as a step uh, forward. Aaron Little says, right wing, we can't rely on poor Snodgrass when Antonio's injured. Excuse me if I've on Booty Boos would be a player that we get everyone on their feet. Sorry if I've butchered that name. I'm not sure how to say it. I've looked at the name 25 times today and I still don't know how to say it. Uh, at N. Lewis says, centre back. Another attacking-minded player, at least one more holding midfielder. Um, at GH90WHU, my friend Greg Hobbs says, another striker, perhaps a centre-back and a winger, if Faguli leaves. Uh, at Bill TF says, definitely another striker and centre midfielder, Wilshire. Wouldn't mind Smalling in either. Uh, Snodgrass and Sacco out, and then room for one other. Uh, at Luke Buck says, backup midfielder. Good point, Luke. As I said, we just let young John Cullen on loan. At Anthony uh, underscore 1965 says, Yep, centre back and another striker midfielder is okay, I think. I don't think they will spend big money though. Uh, I'm going to take a couple more. There's loads more, but I'm going to take a couple more. Um, at Derek Pluto says, My Celtic mates won't be happy, but for me, Dembele, Dembele would thrive at the London Stadium. Much better deal slash player than Arnie, in my honest opinion. Snoddy in another direct in the other direction. I'm not sure we'd be able to pay that sort of money. Um, not that we couldn't afford it, we just wouldn't pay it. Uh, two more. Uh, at Hammers Poles 1966 says we need a winger. That way Arnie and I who can provide cover at striker if needed and covers Antonio's absence. Centre midfield would be nice but not essential. And one more uh, goes to Jamie LJ Lewis says, um, another attacking midfielder and striker. We can't play with one up top every game. We need to make change. 
we, we need to change tactics and formation. So a lot of you are agreeing with me there, centre back, centre midfielder, um, that sort of thing. Number two, and this follows up from the last question really, um, we disappointed to see yet again young Reese Burke and Josh Cullen go out on loan. <sighs> Did you know what this? You've obviously got comments from the chairman David Gold that doesn't give the youngsters that much of a um, that much hope really when he's saying that you know the days of that are gone. But when I look at Reese Burke, Josh Cullen, you know Josh Cullen especially. I think they're ready to make a step up. If you're not going to step into the team now, what, I mean, I mean, they're twenty in their twenties now, both of them. When are you going to step in? Um, young Reese Oxford's gone over. That one I agree with because he's very young. He's gone over to Mooching Gladback. He's doing very well out there. Um, but with these two guys, just get him in a match day squad. Like, just get him in the match day squad. Get him in and around it. Get him used to it. I don't see like I could obviously I can see the benefits of them going on alone, but. There's got to be a point where you, you know, you dip your toe in the water when you say, "No, look, stay with us this year," and um, you know, we'll we'll take you to a few away games. We'll, you know, we'll chuck you on for the last ten just to get them used to it. You know, you've got to take that dive at some point. Like if you know, you look, you don't have to look at Man United with the likes of Reese, uh, Marcus Rashford, and you know, teams like that who are not afraid to. Jesse Lingard is one of theirs that come through the, you know, come through the youth system. Just take a chance on them, you know. One of them might surprise you. If imagine if Everton done the same to Wayne Rooney as we're doing to Josh Cullen, he may never have been found. Might have ended up playing for Port Vale the rest of his career. Um, yeah, I am very disappointed to see him going on them because I want to see a few of these kids in the match day squads. I want to see them in the, you know, getting their chances in the Capital One Cup or whatever the fuck it's called now. Um, but let's have a look at what you, some of you guys says um, at. Connor WHUFC says uh, they were both fifth choice in their positions. Much better to go out and play every week. Never going to develop playing one game here. There's developing and there's getting used to it. I mean, footballing wise, of course they've developed better out on loan. But you know that's that's my opinion anyway. Uh, at Jack and Dear not twelve seventy one says I completely agree with the loan deal. It's it's uh, what I said. Needed to be done since the start of pre-season. Come January, where they will be ready to return. That, that's a, a good thing, though, um, that I've seen. They haven't given full season loans. They've only given um, until January. So there might be some plans. Hopefully there is, but there might be some plans. Shit, it's looking a bit creased. Um, at PBM 1968 says, Yes, disappointing. After two to three seasons out alone, now should be their time and be fully integrated into the first team squad. Cullen especially... Cullen is the one for me because he looks like the natural um, replacement for Mark Noble. I, I could be wrong. Maybe you disagree with me. Leave it in the comments down, uh, in the comment section down below if you disagree with me. But he looks like the one to replace Noble. And for me, and I hate to say this, and, I, and I'm, on a, I'm not a fan of Noble's abilities, but I'm a fan of him as a captain. Um, he's coming to the end. And... You know, I want to get someone that's ready made, ready to go. You know, you don't need to go and spend money. They don't like spending money anyway, so this baffles me. Uh, at Geo Mackey, Red Hammer 8 says, Burke I get, but has to replace Ginge next 12 months. Cullen is a different case, quite light in central midfield and shown plenty in pre-season. He's very disappointed. Uh, at Hammer Social says, not really. It's better than for them to play week in, week out in the championship than to sit on the bench in the Premier League. Uh, at English Hammer 28, yes, it is better uh, to be the last loan. This better be the last loan for both. At R1 Game says no, they would be nothing more than bit part players. They need minutes and football. Would have provided better depth and backup though. At Dave Evans 1986 says will be good to get experience in the Championship one more season alone. Then they will be ready. At Billy, oh, I think he's ready already, Cullen. Um, at Billy Ray 91 I can't see them getting into our team at the moment, so they're better off going on themselves somewhere else. Uh, they should play more often. At WHU Stat says, yes, great backup and will benefit uh, to be in and around the first team. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, an injury, the kid could step in and surprise everyone. You know, you've got to give them the chance. 
Uh, at Gus Salmon says yes and no. Yes, because I enjoy developing good players and it would shut gold up. No, if they get regular game time. At Billy Dennis 02 says very, uh, as there were great potential for both of them to break into our first team this season. However, I think we will keep Holland, Rice and Tony. Uh, Martinez, that is. Uh, at James Hawkins, as again, once again, no relation. Bolton is a big club to loan to. I'd be more pissed off if we sold them. Rice is almost in. One at a time is fine with me. Um, at Greg Hobbs says, I'd like to see Cullen feature a bit more this year. Since Tony Carr left, we haven't promoted anyone to the first team. I'll take a couple more. At Adam27996, yes, can't see what Cullen has to do to get in the squad, but the perfect club to go due to, due, due to the manager. At Tommy TTDK20, absolutely gutted. I thought Cullen would slot into the first team well after this pre season. And uh, Anthony Richards, Anthony underscore 1965, says, Yes, are we still the academy? These lads should never be making. Uh, these lads should have been at least making the bench. Uh, thanks very much for your feedback on that one, guys. A lot, of, you know, a mixed, mixed, mixed one. That one. I like the mixed ones because everyone's got different opinions. And one that's coming up, number four, the bonus one this week, has got a lot of mixed ones. Um, number three, although it's not been the greatest of pre-seasons, who has impressed you the most during it so far? Um, as I said, I've not been impressed by the defence. I think the defence has been shaky. One, one person that's quite disappointing this year, I, I thought he started off quite badly, uh, and I haven't heard his name mentioned, is Masuaku. And, um, you know, he was really pushing on last year. And, to be honest, Cresswell hasn't been much better either. But with Cresswell, it might be a psychological thing, seeing as he got uh, a, a real bad injury in the last pre-season. So he might be just taking it easy. But Masuaku's disappointed me. And um, all the defence. But the people who's impressed me, I've been very impressed with a couple of our youngsters. Uh, Josh Cullen was playing very well. Um, Nathan Holland, I thought, was done absolutely brilliantly. So Same as Tony Martinez. Although, them two, I don't think they're going to quite cut it in the Prem just yet. But uh, it's a good back. We, we need the backup at the moment. Um, but they'll benefit from being in and around Hernandez. Um, Declan Rice has, has seemingly, I've, I've heard the name of course, but you know, with defenders, it's been Burke and Oxford and the name's been banded around, but he just seems to have excelled from nowhere. He's been very impressive and I'm glad we've kept him uh, at the moment. He hasn't gone out alone, not as far as I'm, I know. And um, the last one, a senior player, two senior players actually, uh, Andre Ayew, as I think has been very impressive and that could come in, in handy. Um, with the signings of Anatovic and uh, Chikorito, his name's sort of being left out because Antonio's going to come back and people not seeing him getting in the squad. But he's got a couple of goals to his name, and um, I think he's played very well in the, as well as we could have uh, in the circumstances because we haven't been very good at at all. But the other one that's impressed me is Anatovic. He looks like a good signing. Uh, been warned by Stoke players that and, and ex Stoke players and uh, fans alike that it'll be absolutely magnificent for one game and then not turn up for the next three. Hopefully, being a, a new club, we'll see the good games to bad games ratio in our favour, at least for this year. Um, but in pre-season, he's looked brilliant. He's athletic, he's tall, um, he's got some skill. He can beat a man, he can cross a ball, he can score a goal. Um, he, he's got pace, you know, all of that stuff. All the stuff that Robert Snodgrass hasn't got, but... Um, he's another one that's disappointed me but I'm willing to give him a chance right let's see what you guys I'll, I'll go on all day if if I could um, let's see what you guys said at Geo Mackey says Rice and Holland the most Obiang has shown his class with minimum effort at times as has Arnautovic um, Arnie looking up for it Chick, Chick at the sort of time we saw of him look good uh, great movement and passion Rice, Holland, Cullen and Arnautovic I said that Are you Martinez and Arnautovic it was only a cameo, but Chica saw his, showed his class. Uh, at Sam Cam 06 says, sorry, let me go back. Jack and Dia 1271 and, and, and at NZ Hammers said them. I don't want to leave your names out there, boys. At PBM 1968, Declan Rice and Arnie look more impressive in the games to date. Um, would like Martinez to have 45 minutes against City to see how he plays against the top side. At Sam Cam 06, on out of it for me, the pure strength and skill of the guy. You can already tell he'd be quality for us next season. At N Lewis, um, 
says Martinez and Rice. Marco has looked like a fantastic signing. At Will Ballam says Tony, simply, with a little hammer sign. At Ben Lewis, five says Nathan Holland. Didn't look like out of his place once in uh, pre-season so far. At John, 1664 says, I think Byron deserves a mention. Hopefully a big season for him. Um, Pete, at, at Pete underscore Vaughn, plainly says Arnie. Um, at Billy Dennis 02, Tony's strength has been, uh, and finishes has been very impressive. I think he'll break through. Arnie, of course, Rice looks like he's played in our team for years. Uh, at Creek Mouse says, Martinez, Holland and Byron looks more determined and confident. Yeah, but I forgot him as well. Byron, especially in that game against a German team, he played very well. Um, at Thomas B37237094 says, there can't be that many Thomas B, surely. At Arnie and Zab, although we still look shaky defensively and still conceding poor goals. Uh, Stevie uh, Dixie underscore 91. Holland very lively. Obiang and Adrian will be pulling out the performances. At GH90WHU, Arnie looks good. Obiang looks fit. Uh, great assist in the last game. Excited for the new season. A couple more. At Clarkies underscore R. Martinez and Rice. Hernandez's movement and chances. In that time he was on, gives me real optimism. Um, Adam Smith says, Arnautovic, skillful and arrogant. And Paul uh, Macca11, Paul says, Ayus looked decent, Martinez looked okay, but we know he will struggle. Watched him at Oxford several times, and Holland looked good too. So, pretty much the same players came coming in over and over and over again. Right, so let me find this next tweet, because this one was very excited. I just... I did know this was coming, but it sort of slipped my mind to mention it in other videos. But because of the um, the World Championships uh, that's been at our stadium, obviously we're playing our first three games away from home because our uh, stadium isn't going to be ready till September. Now, um, the reason I mention this is because the... Uh, what do they call it? I'm going to call it the EFL Cup because, one, it's got a different sponsor every year. Two, it's... You know, it, it's one of them things where it's just the League Cup at the end of the day. It's not the Coca-Cola Cup or the or the Sky Bet Cup or, or whatever they want to call it. It's the Co it's the League Cup, and um, that falls within the month. So number four for me um, this week, and this is a question that I thought I'd chuck in because it won't get another mention otherwise. Is playing our first round in the League Cup away from home acceptable? as surely it hinders our chance of success. Now, I, I find this stadium thing with the League Cup, not just the League Cup, but the League as well, uh, is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I can show you a video today of Miss Brady saying um, that our fixtures will take absolute unprecedented um, priority over anything else now we're one season in and it's already not um, you want to move into this stadium for success um, somebody said to me that the teams in the second round are seeded now I wasn't I, I wasn't even aware of that rule uh, I, I wasn't aware that we, we was we was a seeded team or whatever I know that they they do that in the first round, but I don't know. Maybe I, I you know, it, it that, for me still it doesn't matter. Um, but the cup games, if you want to move to this stadium for success, and you want to move to this stadium to win trophies, giving up your home advantage for any competition, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're playing the bottom team in the conference. Yeah. Um, Although we should have enough to beat them, but giving up your chance of, of home advantage is is mind-boggling to me. Like I don't know why you would do that. It's an advantage for a reason. Now, you go back twelve months um, to when we played at Quentin Stanley. I still believe that if we was playing away from home, we we might have got beat that night. It was only we only beat them in the ninety-third minute or something like that. So to give up your right and, and saying, you know, oh, you should be able to beat these teams, it's a home advantage for a reason. I'd rather play every cup tie, no matter who is against that home, uh, than anything else. So to be to have to give up your home advantage 
because now you rent a stadium when you did own one. I think it's ridiculous. And, you know, I've got to say this straight away, that it seems like it, it was another lie to, to, you know, to swear us to go into the stadium. Um, and that's poor. And I've just seen another thing. Now, I don't even know whether this affects it, but there's other games next year on from the 27th and 28th of July. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether it's a smaller scale event or whatever, but if we've got to do the same thing again, pull all the seats out and get all the seats back in, we're not going to see any football next August either. But we'll, we'll come to that when we, um, you know, I, I don't know. It just seems absolutely ridiculous to me that, that any team should give up their own advantage. Um, and, and it's not fair as well on the smaller teams that rely on this sort of stuff. Like if you get a fourth division team like Accurate and Stanley, the shares of the cup competition in at the London Stadium, like keep them teams afloat, you know. If I was a smaller team and I got a home, I got a away draw against Man United, uh, Man United. If I was a smaller team and I got a, an away draw against West Ham, I'd complain because that's a lot of money being thrown down the drain. But anyway, let's see what you guys think. I know that there was a few. I was, I was looking at them. Um, there was a few mixed reactions here. Um, at Billy Ray 91, as a Premier League team, it shouldn't matter where we play. Uh, should be able to get a result. Um, at Jay Johnson says it's not the not the League Cup. It's the old paint, old Johnson's paint trophy, which we put in an under tw twenty three squad out. No, no, it isn't, uh, Jane. I'm afraid to say it, it is the League Cup. Um, at Gio Mackey, Red Hammer Eight says agrees with me. Red, ridiculous, really. Even if things, even little things such as the youngster. Rice and Holland getting to play in front of a large home crowd. I exactly. At Mace WHU69 said, being called West Ham United is more likely to end of our, ch our chances of success. I, I like the humour there, mate. Um, at Stan WHU1 says, totally unacceptable. Who would give up their home advantage willingly in a cup competition? Priority, priority for us was yet another lie from Brady. I, I mean, I tend to agree there, mate. Uh, not really. Last few years we've been knocked out by lower league position at home anyway. I'm pretty sure we got knocked out to Man United last year, mate, and we beat Chelsea. Um, at DR Montcatron says, the point of the cup matches is the luck of the draw. As soon as we sold our soul for the stadium, then we lost any control on our decisions. Uh, at D Patmore says, not ideal, but if we really want a cup run, we should be able to win anyway. Hopefully this will be a only year. Uh, at Billy Dennis 02 says, of course it does, they need to sort it out quick. At ENL says, the club make the biggest mistake going to the London Stadium as we don't have the rights to anything as we just rent the place. Uh, at Greg Hobbs, another life on the board. Hopefully it won't make much of a difference. Have a good following regardless. At Daniel Third now 90, I think as the primary residence, any event should fit in and around a club schedule unless it was already booked before we move. Um, agreed. At Jamie Norwood say, didn't Brady say that our fixtures would have priority over anything else? Just add it to the long list of lies they've told us. And Serif the bastard says, um, no, it isn't acceptable. Uh, the fans were conned into moving into the Olympic Stadium. Brady said our football fixtures will take priority, which is clearly a lie. Um, it's not only the fact that we're giving up our own advantage as well. Like as a an away game traveller, and the, and the average you know dad that takes his kids and think now people always argue this. You don't have to go. You don't have to go. But people like to go. So having the first four games um, of the season away from home, one of which is in Manchester, one of which is in Newcastle, which for the average person is an overnight stay. One is in Southampton, and one could be anywhere anywhere in the country it takes a lot of toll on the wallets as well and the club could have done something like offered free travel to the first three games because of the inconvenience that they've they've, they've made but oh, oh, i'm just a you know a, a punter as they like to say at my football club now anyway thank you very much 
for joining us on this edition of West Ham Fan TV's Monday Musings. Um, I'm back on the social with Graham tomorrow. Um, the Premier League season is six days away, of course. We've got content going up every day in the run up to the uh, in the run up to the beginning of the Premier League season. I'm really excited. Obviously, today we've got Monday Musings. Tomorrow we've got on the social. We've got previews. We've got collaborations with some big YouTubers. Um, we've got all sorts of stuff. A, a brand new show coming on Friday by Dan. Then on Saturday we've got something else, another collaboration, I think. And then on Sunday is the big one, so we'll be back up at Old Trafford. Um, fan cams, look out for all of them. Post match pint, and then we start all over again the week after. The season is back. That means we are back with regular content, and I can't wait. Thank you very much for joining me on this edition. Come on, you irons. <laughs>